buddy. How you doing? There? <laughs> oh my god. I think you actually scared Professor Aubrey. You did. <laughs> I, I, I saw the fear in her eyes afterwards. That was not yeah. intentional. But hi, um, <laughs> this is Tim Jowsma. I'm here for another fun-filled week of Friends Talking Nerdy. This week, I've got the holiest of holies. I've got the Reverend Tracy with me. I also have the greatest legal mind of the Pacific Northwest. I have Professor Aubrey. How are you both? Excellent. Also good. Always good. I'm pretty sure that's my answer every time. I need to shake <laughs> shit up. I need to start like you just making up like random little words uh, that's not just good, just to give something different because variety for the show is important for me. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can no. just be on an even keel and be good all the time. Yeah, yeah that's you can. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, who's really consistently good through the pandemic? I mean, this is just, I'm good between panic attacks. Can I just say it's that way? (laughs) Yes, you can. Yes. Now, before we get into the show proper here, um, I wanted you two to be able to, to, to dish, dish the dirt. You both, you both are like sisters from another mister here because you both got the rocket books. Rocket book. Oh, look at that. Rocket in- book. I brought it. Mine's got a panda. <laughs> Mine get- doesn't. They're the same color, though. Oh, we both got teal twinsies. Twinsies. <laughs> this was actually the only one that they had in stock. was the only color that they had in stock. Wow. They must have been really popular for Christmas, I guess, because... I, well, so that's the thing. Since I got mine, and so mine... Um, it's just a notebook, so it just has um, dot pages, dot rule pages, and it is just a plain notebook that you write in. And, um, yeah, what was I saying? <laughs> 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 oh, and one of the first things that I thought of when I started using it, because I love it, <laughs> is how... <laughs> How? Aubrey needs notes for her notebook. <laughs> what? 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 Got this podcast on weed. <laughs> and this is why we don't have three people on the show ever. <laughs> <laughs> right, because inevitably there's this ganging up upon by the two and the one. Yeah. I see that happening now. I'm <laughs> concerned about it. Anyway, I thought it would make a wonderful gift for many people that I know. I immediately was like, this is such a great gift because it is so versatile because it's just like a notebook. Yes. Um, that was something that, you know, like I had mentioned when I talked about the first time this started with my husband researching, really looking for smart pads. Um, he had an iPad that another a fellow student, um, he's finishing up a, a engineering degree. So if any people out there are engineers, you might find it interesting, some of the types of rocket books they have. But um, I don't remember off the top of my head, I actually shot him a message because we're so used to basically having a coworker relationship at home that he knows I can send him a Google Hangouts and like just whenever he gets around to it, he'll, he'll let me know. So I might know here in a minute, um, but he got two different styles and the, but he was trying to move away from the iPad a little bit because as nice as it was, like, you know, he could put engineering paper on the iPad and then, you know, write on it and then print it. And it was like it printed on engineering paper. And that was really cool. But he just wanted something a little bit better, um, uh, something that possibly could carry over better into his career, too, as he's getting ready for potentially starting a new job. Uh, so it started with that kind of research, landed on the rocket book. One cool thing they had was the small guy, um, the little flip top. Yeah. And there is a person out there, and I'll probably try to find the video now and post it. But he specifically uses one of the pages to co- do like some type of um, – Oh, some type of logging and scoring with golf. Like he's really into golf. And so his whole tip for making templates, like before you Sharpie it permanently, which is what he did with the one page we were looking at, was, you know, try it a few times, leave it erasable, and then go over it with a Sharpie. And so it was kind of cool because he could wipe it, and then he had made his own template. I thought that was incredibly cool about it is that you can make your own templates. Like uh, what I'm working on with making my own hiking log in the back of my Panda journal. Right. Yeah, that's super cool. And I, I really like, I've 
used it for a few different things so far. One was one is I've just been taking my daily notes on it, so I have a to do list in it. And then I just like to like jot things down or draw little pictures while I'm working. So I have just pages with those kinds of notes on them. And it's just so easy to clean the pages off that it's just amazing to me. I'm just blown away by this notebook. Um, Then the other thing we did with it was used it to keep score in a game. And it's really great for that too. It's like it's own little whiteboard. If you, you can treat a page like it's own little whiteboard. Right. Oh, go ahead. That I won, by the way. And you won, by the way. (laughs) (laughs) Tim was just feeling left out. Yes. No, um, I I agree. And then what's cool is it's a whiteboard, but it doesn't, like, wipe away. Like, you know, for those that can see, I'm I'm wiping my hand all over it. It's not going anywhere. Like, what I like is the different books can really cater to the different things that you might need. Like, I am at home a lot. I'm a little bit more into trying to get into my mindfulness jam. And I really like all of the templatiness of the Panda Journal. It cracked me up when I saw a review for the Panda Journal and somebody was complaining about the pre-made templates. So I'm like, well, then maybe you should have gotten, like, the core. Or, you know, uh, I know one of the ones that my husband has is actually, it's got the grid, like, it's got the grid lines in it. Mm. So it has a graph paper page, like, two right. of them, I think and then he's got some line pages and then some dot grids. And then his other one, it has more of, like, the achievements and stuff like that, which I'm wondering if it's the core, like, what you have, because I don't know if yours has the boxes for, like, objectives and stuff like that. No, it doesn't. Oh, mm-hmm. gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So yours is just the notebook, then. Yeah, it's thus, just, here's the page. Yeah, thus the core, right? It's mm-hmm. just the core notebook. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and see, mine's got all of these for, like, a morning routine where you write down things that you're grateful for and three things that you're excited about and an affirmation and your priorities for the day. Like, so, I don't know. I was pretty impressed. Um, I like that. Yeah, I think it's great. Like, uh, you know, I map out my whole day, first thing I do in the morning now. Oh, nice. I like the drawing. You like my little guy? <laughs> I do. Yeah, thanks. Uh, and then you know putting in meetings I also love by the way the colored pens because Mm. like on mine I use the shit out of that like I use it for meals because I just kind of like uh, I've taken over a lot of just running the house because my husband in his final terms of school it was already going to be crazy so kind of what's made moving that to remote manageable is my ability to help like keep the house going and make sure food and things are happening so I like it's funny because we've joked a few times about like he's gonna have a hard time transitioning to like the real world because he's just like hey if he's got to work for lunch then you know his his partner just brings up lunch on a little tray table and then sets it on the bed so (laughs) he's not gonna have that in business land (laughs) no but you know we can sit and like get on the same page in the morning and it's really helped reduce a lot of the stress during the pandemic Mm -hmm. like a lot of couples um are really stressed out about having to share the space for so long like especially when you have working professionals Mm -hmm. and it's nice because i'm like all right i've got my blue my blue pen and i'm gonna block and put these lines on this side and that means don't disturb him because he is either in class or like right now he's got this really cool virtual conference that he's doing this week, which mm-hmm. is just a side note, a cool nerdy thing. These things are still going on because they're just doing them over Zoom um, instead of going like he would have normally had to go to Washington for this. But uh, instead he gets to go to all these cool things. And anyway, so he's getting to do a neat conference this week, which means we're even busier than normal. And I'm really glad that we had already kind of established a pattern around kind of talking Like, we kind of have a morning meeting in a weird way. Like, my partner and I have a morning meeting, and then we talk about our day, and then we have our days, like, separately in the house. But it's, we just have our days, and then we sync up at the times that we sync up for meals. (laughs) Right. And it's really helped us both kind of having this together. Um, it's, it's reduced a lot of the stress, you know, these final terms, he's got a final project and shit that he's got to do this time. So it's getting real. Mm-hmm. Well, 
I'm glad that you love your rocket book. I'm glad that you inspired me to figure out what that was. And we'll talk one. about the pens more. I mean, you had it. Oh, you know, oh, I mean, yeah, true. Like more. the colored pens are great. Um, I got what? What did you end up? Did you get the whole smattering, or did you just get the blue and the red? I got um, seven different colors. So I got a, like a teal and a green and a purple and a red and a blue and a dark green and a pink. Okay, I'm jealous. <laughs> and they're, I am extremely fucking jealous. <laughs> and they're re- retractable click pins. Tracy even went the full Valley Girl route there. I'm like so jealous. I'm so jelly. They're also refillable. Yes. I've seen uh, that's one that my partner got was he got a refillable, like a fancy one. So it also looks really nice. Mm -hmm. Um, So I really that's another thing that's to point out, too, is um, the different sizes that you can get is really cool. And the refillable options that are out there, like there's a lot. There was way more pen options that I really anticipated when we first looked into these. Oh, yeah. And like I said, they do make highlighters. And so I don't know why the highlighters wouldn't work the same way as I mean, they would, right, work the exact same way. Exactly. I just haven't ordered mine yet. I We haven't found them in the store. We actually, because we just have these guys. Um, and it's just a purple, blue, green, red. And then one thing I want to give props to, like, as a side little almost review for the pen that came with it, um, I do really love the eraser. I agree with you. The eraser okay. on this pen. So I was using the clicker pens because I was like, oh, I've got all these different colors. I'll use these. But then I happened to pick up the pen that came with the notebook and started using it and then was erasing with the eraser. And I was like, oh, this eraser actually works. Yes. The eraser <laughs> is bomb diggity. The only, the only like gripe that my partner and I both have with the, the, um, the design of this is typically when you write with a pen, what do you do with the cap? Put it in your mouth. No, you heathen. You put it on the end. So it's like. <laughs> <laughs> you ruined my groove. No, but. So. <laughs> most evolved humans put it on the end of the pen. <laughs> no, actually, okay. I was always oh, the bad I, you know, one. You learn something new every day. So. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I, I was also. how that works. That's handy. This comes from me losing pen caps for years, and my mom, like, hated me, I'm pretty sure, most of my childhood, because I would, like, I was that shit kid that just, like, put the pen lid down and forgot about it and walked off and used my pencil. Like, just anyway. So now I've, like, got this thing where it has to go on the end. But that's the kind of point. It's like, I know if I don't put it on the end, I'm going to lose it, right? So, but putting it on the end covers this awesome eraser. So half the time I'll turn to erase it out of habit and then I'll like just smear just the stupid, just the regular classic, like, oh, no, we got to take that off. <laughs> yeah. The good thing is, though, that if you have that on there, it's it's protective covering, sort of like a condom for. What, what are those? <laughs> <laughs> those are for the STDs are a myth, right? Like you don't need condoms. <laughs> Are we going to do the bro they're, science episodes? <laughs> they're water balloons. Yeah. 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 There you go. Protectors. See, now the pen that my partner ordered, his has this kind of eraser, too. And it was kind of nice because it's got, like, its own little lid for that eraser. Right. I remember. So, I've had fancy pens. Yeah. Covering for the eraser. Or Yep. Pencil, mechanical, really nice mechanical pencils with the racer covers. Love that. Oh, and as an engineering student, he cares a lot about fine lines. Yeah. And he is such a nerd about mechanical pencils. Like, oh, wow, I got an earful about mechanical pencils recently that I didn't know were, was there. I didn't know he had that knowledge just on the ready for me. And then <laughs> I knew. <laughs> so uh, it was really cute because then he gave me one of the pencils and I was like oh yeah I like nice pencil but <laughs> uh, but that being said he really loves and he got like the whole folio kit because he wanted it to oh. look sharp for interviews and everything mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's really nice his only thing was he'd gotten the executive size and he kind of wishes that he had gotten the bigger so version eight and a half by 11 yeah, because you can't fit, like, a, a resume copy in it. You're, like, you'd have to fold it in half. So that was the only thing was he was, like, 
okay, maybe he's gotten the bigger ones. And so I don't know, maybe I will, uh, I'll con him into giving me his folio for my panda. And then he can get the bigger uh, one. That's the only yeah. thing for people out there considering it for different purposes is this would be a good one for res- for interviews because you should take a notebook to interviews. But um, if you're thinking about carrying stuff in it, like papers, you should think about that when you consider the size that you get if you're doing the folios. Yeah. But uh, yeah, the pencil, like same thing, by the way, with these pens, I had started using these really awesome colored pens and the erasers are OK. But yeah, definitely notice this eraser eraser a lot better um, because there's this little square on my folio. Like it's got one little blank spot and it is the perfect spot to just treat as a sticky note. Mm. And so I can write something there. And like if I because I also do <laughs> for those that are aware of the level that I nerd out on productivity. I also do Pomodoro cycle uh, method of getting shit done. And so kind of the purpose is, is to not disrupt yourself for 25 minutes. But I'm also a little bit ADD in my noodles sometimes. And my meat computer just pops up with like information that I don't always need to use right now. <laughs> but uh, I can write it down and then get it out of my brain. So it's nice. Mm-hmm. So instead of wasting so many sticky notes, I'm just able to write it there, and because it's a small square, I can take that same microfiber um, wipe and use a little bit of the water and just, like, clean that little square off really quick. Like, okay, it's my five-minute break time between doing a bunch of tasks. Uh, Yeah, that was that, oh, I wanted to text my friend Joe just to say hi because it just hit me, like, that I was supposed to touch, you know, whatever. So, you know, it's kind of nice, like, the different ways that you can use it. Um, I could totally see owning, like, different journals. And just having like a bunch of different ones around. <laughs> yeah. So the only thing that that um, kind of broke my heart, not didn't break my heart. That's so hyperbolic. Oh my god. You were weeping for two nights straight. Tell the truth. <laughs> no. Um, just wailing. You know the moleskin notebooks. Yes. Moleskins? Yes. They're kind of cool, and they have an envelope in the back and they're leather and they're like these really cool notebooks. Uh, they make an electronic version of that now with pages that's sort of like, that's like exactly like this, only it's the Moleskine version of the notebook instead of just a spiral bound notebook. So I was tempted to get that, but I just went with the, the, the lesser investment at first. I always start with the lesser investment. <laughs> Oh, yeah. And so was it another rocket book and they just had like a moleskin theme or is it a different, totally different platform? Well, it's not a rocket book. Like, I don't think it would use the same app. OK. Yeah, it would use it. It would use the moleskin notebook app. Interesting. Yeah, I didn't know there was a moleskin one. Um, and then I don't remember if I talked much about it. Do you have you used much of like the auto save features, like how you can scan it, and depending on which uh, symbol you have checked at the bottom, like that it does different stuff? Because I haven't. I, I really only use this as my planner and my my hiking log, so mm-hmm. I don't have a lot of opportunity to play with those. That's the only bummer. Like for the panda journal, I'm not sure. Like a like, uh, I don't know how many different places you'd need to scan your journals to. You know what I mean? Like, I, I it seems like it would just be like, oh, check the beginning of the week. Where would you like this week to scan to? But mm-hmm. every page has it, and I'm not sure the functionality of it in mine. But uh, I know my husband seems to, to enjoy being able to send different drives in different folders and things like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. I tell you what, if you were a student and you had you, you, you have five different symbols and – by choosing that symbol, you send it to a particular place. So you either it's an email or it goes to a Dropbox folder or a Google Drive folder. Or the, they could all go to different places. So if you were a student being able to assign it to a different Dropbox folder for each of your classes, like that would be ideal. Like I think a student should have these. I think everybody should have these. So if you know me, get ready. The next time I buy you a present, it will be something like this. Awesome, because, you know, if the reverend is good at anything, it is conversion. <laughs> yes, you're very See, good. I, and I'm very susceptible to spiritual conversion. And so this is what I feel maybe like I've joined a cult or something, and the reverend is going to be exerting a greater and greater influence over my life. Like, next time, I will get the panda planner version. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, and then this turns turns into like the hipster version of Red State or something like that. <laughs> oh my gosh! It's just like 
I don't know, friends talking hip, hipster shit. I don't know. <laughs> no, friends it's not hipster. hipster. <laughs> the gluten-free edition of the show. Oh, my God. I would die if I went gluten-free. Do you know as a vegan how much gluten I eat? Like, <laughs> I made bread. Like... <laughs> You make seitan too, which is just yeah. gluten. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's it's like you know all of the stuff that like people say don't eat because it's in bread and like the the thing that celiacs is allergic to the gluten. Like yeah, that's what seitan is made out of. Like mm-hmm. <laughs> somebody asked me if seitan was gluten free. <laughs> like, it's basically the opposite of that. Like, um, here's the here's the gluten free version. <laughs> like I feel bad because that was legitimately <laughs> I I should not be a jerk about like you can kind of be a jerk about the whole like d- people asking vegans what they eat like to me I, I've gone off about this before about that's really kind of a rude question like yeah. in this day and age but like really I should totally like I can make fun of that one like I, people ask me what I eat and I'll say stuff like, oh, I don't know, you know, grass, parsley. Sometimes I get confused and wander outside and start eating tiny rocks. Like, <laughs> uh, like that one I think you can be mean about. But say tan, like, I feel bad when I quit back about, like, when people say, is that gluten-free? And I'm like, yeah, except not. All of it. At all. <laughs> Ex- yeah, every, it's except totally that's gluten-free. the only ingredient. <laughs> if that's not but the But otherwise, yeah. it's free. In opposite land, it's gluten yeah. free because yeah, it's, it's not only gluten. You give it like a puffer fish, but the entire thing is poisonous. Yeah. <laughs> it's anyway. Corn made out of corn. <laughs> yeah. Well, we've had a momentous thing happen this week. Yes, we did. We had it. A new president. Yay. Finally. Yeah. Yes. The whole president thing. Lots of uh, people have already commented on it, but I will ask the room here. Have you felt the weight lifted off your shoulders? Uh, well, I mean, I'm sure I've got friends that are kind of into the the spiritual, like astrological type stuff. Like, I guess, cos whatever it's called, cosmetology, something. <laughs> Not cosmetology, but cosmology. astrology. Astrology. <laughs> astrology. <laughs> See, it's my turn to just be, like, really, really bad for a second. That one. The <laughs> word that the professor used that what's sad is my best friend is into this. And, like, I want to bring her on the show maybe sometime and, like, do Tim's chart because I think it would be funny. And oh, my God. That would be amazing. I think it would be, too. Uh, <laughs> well, she wants to practice doing it. I think it would be, it'd be fun for everybody. So I'll involved. be the guinea pig? What? <laughs> well, because it would be funny. <laughs> Why, 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 why funny for me and not you? Uh, because uh, okay. So to be fair, let's take a vote of the people in the room right now. Who would it rather it be, Tim, out of the three of us? Okay, so you've been outvoted, and awesome. But anyway, so, (laughs) so anyway, I remember somebody at one point mentioning that like something like in that kind of hippie realm of the stars. Um, was going to lift, like, around, like, the 18th or the 19th or something. And then just, I have to say, in general, like, yes. Like, I I feel, like, overall better about life, but I can specifically breathe easier knowing that things did transition. There was no more insanity after, like, kind of the uncertainty we started to feel um, after what happened at the Capitol. You know, a lot of us were probably holding our breath. I know I was kind of. I mean, you know me, my version of holding my breath was, okay, my wrist just went off. Is this BBC telling me that there's something bad going on in America land? Um, (laughs) But no, like, it seemed to go, the transition went, and that is fine. I guess there were some protests, but it was nothing like um, what happened at the Capitol uh, that one day. So I was just relieved when I got the notice, like, and Joe Biden has been sworn in as this president of the United States. And I was like, kick ass. Good job. Democratic Republic. Thank you. Yeah. And, um, new vice president as well. Um, and Kamala Harris. Mm -hmm. And, um, she is so awesome and is the first black, vice president, the first female vice president, the first Asian American vice president. Um, So that was pretty exciting as well. So we have all those firsts happening. And then um, the first transgender person was appointed to the Department of 
health. Which was like super awesome. Mm -hmm. um, the the highest placed official, government official, transgender government official. Mm -hmm. It's out, I guess. Yeah. Um, so lots of good stuff, lots of firsts. Lots of firsts. And what I loved about the inauguration more than anything else, it was boring. My Yay, goodness. Yay, I know. See, that's how politics should be for, like, people like me i <laughs> like it should just be boring like i should have to just i i read a thing i i help vote every two years and then the rest of it should be really fucking boring and i should be able just to go on with my life and feel no need to check the news like so much like that's how that should run <laughs> I'm, I'm so ready for it to be boring are you guys ready for it to be boring i want it to be boring oh very much so i i mean yeah just the past four years of being constantly on edge and being put in a constant state of fear too, that, you know, he's, he's so irrational. He's going to do something stupid. And, you know, that, that was proven time and time again. And just, you know, especially after what happened at the Capitol on the six, it's just, you know, just it, it, the 20th couldn't get here soon enough. You know, I just wish yeah. other people saw the, the, the eminent danger that that we could have been in but you know thankfully thankfully yeah he did kind of a uh, whimper away um <laughs> he flew off to the sounds of the village people Why is really it? yeah yeah his final speech when the helicopter landed at andrews air force base uh he, he gave like one final speech and then um, yeah, they played YMCA, even though apparently the band had sent a cease and desist letter to the Trump campaign before. OK, I was going to say I, I wanted to almost Google this really quick. Like, I, didn't they already get a cease and desist? Could have sworn it was from them. But, yeah, you're you're confirming it. That's good enough for me. Yeah. So. <laughs> but, I, you know, at, at least he was gone. Um, you know, I, there was uh, what was that tweet from Trevor Noah? Like. Um, this is, uh, this is the, re like, he had pictures of, like, uh, like, uh, Ivanka Trump and, uh, Donald Trump Jr. and his stupid girlfriend, and, like, uh, <laughs> it's like, this is the result of, of a consequence, you know, uh, this is what happens when you suffer a consequence, and just showing their pictures, <laughs> you know, but, um, it's, it's, it's over, thank goodness, but we still have a lot to, a lot to clean up here, um, and with Republicans, uh, you know, uh, uh, there's just so much wrong. Like, like one thing I took note of was uh, Chris Christie of all people. Um, I, I hated hearing him on ABC talking about, well, Trump could have been good if he just listened to the right people. <coughs> Me, <coughs> um, just that constant speech, and then you know talking about uh, once it, I, I hate the conservatives do this, but he did the whole uh, equating. Uh, he d basically was upset that Trump was kicked off Twitter and not taking into account that, you know, he kind of started an insurrection based on his words on Twitter, you know? Yeah. Um, the insurrection was bad. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there we go. Okay. I'm going to make that into a meme. <laughs> Professor Ob, insurrection is bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So, so here's the thing. Sorry, Sorry I just I loved that. that was awesome. Northwest. <laughs> Please know that came from a place of love. Like, that, was just, that was great. It's okay. <laughs> it's, it's no, here, here's the here's the thing. Here's the thing is that we Democrats now are in control of the Senate and the House and the executive branch. So we are in control of two branches of government and we need to t get our agenda going and not put up with any nonsense from the Republicans. And I'm very much looking forward to seeing whether that's going to happen. And so I've been really excited that my interest in the news is not just about, oh, my God, what happened it's actually now about policy and I'm interested in, okay, what's yeah. the policy going to be? And I feel I have a role to play as a citizen and shaping that policy. And it just, it feels 
like a huge privilege, right? To, yeah. It, you really appreciate it more, the sense of civility and respect for the rule of law and things that sort of at least feel to me like they're fundamentally undermined by Trump. Mm-hmm. And there were things that existed prior to Trump that were undermined by Trump. Now, one thing that has been discussed is the filibuster in the Senate. Should the Democrats consider ditching the filibuster? Are you asking me in particular? Anybody. The, the filibuster? Yes. Filibuster's bad. Filibuster <laughs> vigilantly. Um, so. Oh, my God. I'm, like, trying to think of, like, the school rock song that taught me about filibusters. I'm like, shit, I know this filibuster, word. Filibuster, you're the one. <laughs> you make Congress lots of fun. So the filibuster, for those of us who don't know, is uh, a procedural tool that can be used in the Senate to um, delay voting. So if I am in the minority and I don't like something the majority is about to pass, I can stand up and start talking and say, I'm filibustering. And it used to be originally that someone from that party had to remain and keep talking. And like as soon Mr. as- Mr. Smith goes to Washington type okay. of deal. As no, soon as I, okay. stop talking, you can vote. They changed the rule along the way so that you don't even have to talk. You just have to say, we're doing a filibuster. And then you kind of get to say how long that filibuster lasts. Which and is going to be the whole time. <laughs> so, so the filibuster was a tool of Jim Crow. So it was used by the segregated South in order to keep themselves from having to integrate. So it was a way to maintain the power of the minority in the Senate. So it's it really needs to go. Like, yes, they can use it against us and we can use it against them, but it's almost like the nuclear, when you think about getting rid of it, it's like the nuclear option to get rid of the filibuster. But you get rid of the filibuster tomorrow and then you can implement your whole agenda for the rest of your term and then you have something to run on in four years. Instead, yeah, instead of what the Republicans have been doing since 2008 of, you know, preventing a Democrat from getting anything in their agenda done and then running on the fact that the Democrats were not able to accomplish anything in their agenda, which uh, this cycle cannot go on. I think one big reason why people need to continue to keep that fire of activism in their hearts going is to make sure that the Democrats don't make the same mistakes they made in 2008 and 2012, um, because they they abdicated a lot of unnecessary power to the Republican Party that you know resulted in what you know in in 2010 and 2016. The same thing happened in the Clinton years. I mean, it tends to happen. Yeah. That with a new president, you'll get a new a shift in Congress. But um, it's sh- I mean, I, I mean, one thing I'm concerned about is th- the fact that, you, you know, I, I, I don't think it's good for the overall stability of the country to have this constant flip-flopping though in turn i mean what i mean by that is this i mean we talk about like the executive orders uh, why how is it beneficial to have a government that every four to eight years is completely going to flip how they do things you know for 48 years they do things like option a and then a new party comes in and then they ought to all of a sudden have to switch to option b i don't you know i mean there's it's gonna weird be... it's all it's almost like over time they're establishing some weird status quo and we maintain the status quo by the shifting of this pendulum from right to left that's that's the traditional wisdom about mm-hmm. that flip flopping, but all bets are off. Like we we have not seen something like what happened on January sixth at the Capitol. We've never seen that happen. Yeah. So that was the eighteen hundreds. <laughs> but that was the English that that went in there that time. Sorry, yeah. what? <laughs> yeah. Our own people like that wonderful Ted Cruz. Yeah. So. Um, <laughs> 
So lots lots of work to do, it seems like, in Washington these days. Uh, and, I mean, Biden's hitting the ground running, too. You know, he went in there just ink pen ready, um, trying to undo and unfuck some things, including, like, I guess some weird shit that got passed on how to even, like, change regulation. Um that I'm not going to try to to go into. I don't know if either of you, I, I had just kind of learned about it and like, mm, I don't understand enough about like uh, politics and regulatory stuff to like to get into it too much. But it's just some kind of horse shit where it's like in order to get rid to to add a policy, you had to get rid of two or something. It was something very oh, weird. Right. But- yeah. Okay, okay, cool. You know what I'm talking about. Then. Yes. Yeah, it's that yes. really for every For every new regulation, you couldn't, you agencies, so it was the president saying to his own agencies, you agencies are not allowed to make a new regulation unless you get rid of two existing regulations. And that makes no sense. I mean, it, it I, for when it comes to regulation, do I think that there needs to be an oversight committee of some sort that, that consistently cycles through to make sure there's no redundancies in the law or whatever, or, or regular. Darling, that's what the courts are for. <laughs> really? Yeah. Wow. That's why we have legal, legal uh, minds. On the yeah. Show. So we have that already. Okay. Boom. So what's the problem with the system we have? Well, it gives everybody due process. And what is a due process? Due process is the right to be heard, the right to show up, the right to have time to to prosecute your case. And so then that takes a long time. Hmm. And so so you don't have people doing the smackdown on the agencies as quickly as you might want them to. Well, I mean, still, though, just just I don't know if there was some oversight, I guess, that that could see if there is redundant regulations that that could be adjusted. I don't know. But, you know, if it is the courts, let's uh, let's. I I mean, I think that's supposed to be redundant (laughs) redundant regulations. Oh, yeah. So like the OMB or somebody like that could do that. That's what it's called. (laughs) The Office of Management and Budget. (laughs) (laughs) The charge of efficiency. What are you going to do? No. What are you going to do? <laughs> well, I mean, that being said, some of our stuff, like, it, it's pretty well known that we have old practices, like, in our government that could use to be, like, I don't know, audited and refined. So who's to say that, like, some of these other regulatory, like, lists of addendums and policies, like, couldn't stand to be gone through at this point? I had a really good friend in Arizona um, that kind of, he explained it this way. It's like a business isn't going to stay and work on the exact same rules. Like once they've existed for so long and so long, eventually you kind of start from scratch at one point. And he's like, uh, I feel like we've kind of added addendums and added rules to some point. Like we just need that review to consolidate and have the new rule book out and like get rid of like any of the weird crap. Like, can we get rid of the penny? Like, I think I've gone off about that before. Like, that's something that we really do. It costs us more money than it actually, like, it costs more to make a penny than a penny's actually worth. Yeah, and I I think the only reason they are made, like, right now is just because we've always done it. I mean, there's no logical reason for it. Most people are (laughs) art-based these days. You know, so. So, yeah, let's see. Are there redundancies or some, like, I don't know, room for improvement in our processes? Like, I I think you could look anywhere in the government and see that. But, yeah, like, but I guess, like, the whole point of it was just to make it difficult to create new regulations from what well, it, I understood. It was to, to deconstruct the regulatory state and that's what I think they were doing, right? They were uh, trying to get rid of that, yeah, because according to that math, you know, over time, it, you know, there will be no regulations because, you know, for everyone you put up, you take down too. It's they don't want the regulations, and that's bad. Yeah. That's, yeah. Well, over. I mean, I hear I hear what Tracy is saying, which is that overregulation is bad, and I hear what you're saying, which is underregulation is bad. Both of these things are true, and it's that getting that balance that's really difficult. Exactly. It's a middle yeah. path. See, 
see, I'm going to convert everybody to Buddhism. I'm just going to teach you guys how to apply Buddhism to every fight and every problem. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and I don't want to say, like, by the way, my stance, just to be clear for anybody, I, I, I would not say that I necessarily believe that we are over or under regulated, but I can see the argument for wanting to look at things like it, but that's different than like making a rule where you have to get rid of it because then you're throwing out potentially good things. Like yeah. eventually you'd make somebody throw out a good regulation to pass something that's like, okay, I have to pick this because it's better, but the other one was still really good. So yeah, like I am all for getting rid of that way of doing it. There are better ways to go through and get rid of repetitive regulation or redundant regulation or unnecessary regulation. Yep. Come on. Yeah. We still have laws in some states where you can't keep like certain types of farm animals in bathtubs. We could stand to go through some of our regulations. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think I'm pretty sure slavery is still legally on the books in Mississippi. Yeah. Like you can still find like the weird laws by state that still exist just because they're there and the process to get rid of it, is dumb. Like, I guess it's, <laughs> yeah, it's illegal to read the wizard of Oz every Thursday. In the week, Minnesota, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like that level of stuff. It's just like, really? And it's like, really? Like, I really do. I think Texas had the thing about like cows in the bathtub or something like Texas had its own weird one with livestock. Uh, and, and to be clear, of course, every state has them. I, you know, Michigan has, the, I, I know Michigan has had plenty like that. Every place has that. So we're not singling out the South here. I uh, am. Sorry. I'm, I'm from the South. You know so I, I claim that I get to single out the South on a regular basis. Same <laughs> okay. Don't you think, Tracy, do you think, or are you like, no, I don't want to single out the South? Oh, no, I love singling out the South. I don't yeah. know. I <laughs> Like, at the same time, I also try to, to have that, that talk of, like, see, but this is where I say, like, we are we are a melting pot of cultures because we do have those very different cultures. And it's not that it's bad. It is just a very different culture. And if you don't fit in with that very different culture, <laughs> you might be inclined to uh, leave that very different culture, which is what I did. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> you both escaped. <laughs> we both escaped, but uh, oh it's my so gosh! Of course, I don't have anything good to say about it, or else I would still be there. <laughs> like, no, no, my raising had me have that moment where I accidentally said something horrible, and I didn't know it was a racist term until that moment. Everybody stopped talking and looked at me, and then I went, "Oh," oh. <laughs> because it goes back to where you were raised. <laughs> Like, I wasn't talking about a human being at all, just to be clear. Like, it was a nickname for a trinket. But um, I didn't know until that moment. So I, it makes me more glad that I, I left when I did because it makes me more understanding of how people get to a certain age and still have a, a certain mentality about them. And I think a lot of that is never leaving it because there's a lot of psychology around like you are what you consume and if you think what you consume is only what you eat um you consume more than that like it, it's also like what you surround yourself with so if you are surrounding yourself with that level of it constantly i could see going south but on bunch but uh <laughs> but on the south there you go <laughs> I had to bring Aubrey back. She was starting to eat her glasses. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just really thinking about what you were talking about because it's very interesting to think about how. Uh... She's like a professor. <laughs> interesting. Oh, is that what she was? Oh, she was That's professoring what... me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I convert I'm you. Professoring. And, and you professor me, I'll a... convert you. <laughs> what is the the jacket that professor? With the typical? patches. Yeah, with the patches. Yeah, with the elbow patches. Yeah, yeah okay. I need all of them. I need all <laughs> of them. Yes. Please come on. But I am all for. I like to kind of bust on the south some, but it is kind of funny when you realize like it's still kind of uh, it's cultural bias versus cultural bias like. <laughs> Well, so it's it's fine. It's that tre it's fi treading that fine line of not being like accidentally bigoted against like where I'm from. <laughs> well, also keeping in mind right. too. I mean, because I know the Ken Burns documentary Country Music had touched upon it when they talked about um, what was Jimmy Rogers. Uh huh. Jimmy when Rogers. Jimmy Rogers passed away, how 
you know, in the South, it was like front page news that he passed away. And yet other parts of the country were talking maybe, you know, page three or four or, or something like that. It wasn't a big deal. And and you get that in, in regions around the country. I mean, the, you know, the, like certain regions, certain regions care about certain things, you know, like, you know, Michigan does their own stuff. I mean, lots of people have pointed out that there's that the homogenization 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 of america right has to take some of that out as time goes by we're more and more like each other globally mm-hmm. so some of that is going away but hopefully i mean i think i hope it remains i hope the mm-hmm. culture that i come from somebody still wants to learn about it and do things the way that they used to do them because i hope that those skills don't disappear but otherwise, I don't really care. Yeah. Well, it's, I mean, there's nothing wrong, though, with the, celebrating your culture. I mean, Dolly Parton, you know, we've, the, 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 we've, we've talked about it personally, and I, I think we've even talked about it. I mean, if there's anybody that's a perfect representation of Southern culture in a positive light, it's Dolly Parton. I mean, she's very much a supporter of country music, Southern culture, Southern food and stuff like that. But doesn't bring the negative aspects to it because she's not an asshole, you know. Uh, By the way, happy I love birthday, Dolly, Dolly Parton. Happy birthday, Dolly. <laughs> I I feel like there was this joke that all of the Confederate statues should be replaced with statues of Dolly Parton, Dolly Parton and so I am all for that. <laughs> like she is a true American hero. Like Dolly her Parton. Brother, um, <laughs> her brother passed away today. Oh. From, and he played with her for a long time. From what? Cancer. That's such oh Dolly. <laughs> I've been to Dollywood, which is a treat in and of itself. Uh, I, the, I've been to Dollywood many times. That's a Dollywood shot class. The one, the only Dollywood. I went there for a band trip in high school. Um, but oh yeah, my just, lord! That's pretty much where I'm from, Tracy. Is it really? <laughs> yeah, oh my god! Like, Are we gonna get our draws out on each other? Oh. Uh, <laughs> I lived about 30 minutes, a half an hour as a crow flies from Dollywood. From Dollywood. We we had season passes. Oh, my God. (laughs) We had Six Flags over Texas. We Uh had Dolly Splash Country. We had the Dolly Music Mansion. We had a lot of Dolly stuff. (laughs) Oh, my God. Oh, man. No, I just remember Dollywood. I just remember Dollywood and like the one, the one roller coaster that maybe came up over my head. Like there was, yeah. it wasn't much. And then you could totally go and like pan for gold, which I thought was the most hilarious thing to do at Dollywood. Is yeah, because it had nothing to do with Appalachia. Like there was okay. never gold in Appalachia. No, but uh, <laughs> also, you know, Tim, you're talking about the documentary about, you know, country music. And then another documentary that also, I think, goes into just that cultural difference. And it's also Appalachia is Hillbilly. And yes. it, it goes back into let's not let that divide, like do what it's done before. There's a lot of good people like in those areas. And I, I'd never want anybody to think like, um, like when I do my Texas accent, I am making fun of a very specific person. <laughs> um, <laughs> who, uh, I, I won't say it on here. Uh, not until certain people in my life has, have passed away, but, um, the like, clock's ticking. No. <laughs> <laughs> one day I'll be able to be open about some of my comedic choices. But uh, Mama T is a character that comes out sometimes. <laughs> like, it's a voice that I've wound up doing, like, in front of the kids just being funny about the South. And, uh, but yeah, like, uh, but I don't ever want it to come from a hateful place either, like, necessarily. Like, uh, I, I wouldn't ever want it to be confused as grouping in, like, an entire area. It's more like certain people that I know from this area are this way. Mm-hmm. But uh, that that's more of the hyper-religious that I, I have my issue with. Mine's the Southern Baptist. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> certain certain crowd they're in. But I wouldn't even say, like, all Southern Baptists. Like, see, that's where it gets dangerous. It's when mm-hmm. you say all of something. And, and mm-hmm. it never should be. But I do I do kind of like picking on the South a little bit. I You got to. But I'm allowed to. It's kind of like how you can pick on your own kin. 
your own family? Like you can I pick think when you're so. Kid? Yeah, like I'm allowed so. to pick on the South. <laughs> that's how that's how I feel about it. I mean, I agree. I mean, I think every culture has its goods and good parts and bad parts, the positives and negatives. And, you know, people should be open to critique. Um, you know, should I, as a, a, a Yankee, be, 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 be telling uh, my, my Southern friends how, you know, good things and bad things? No, I, I should not because I was not raised Because that, that would make you a carpet bag. Carpet Meanwhile, <laughs> I can tell you, like, yeah, yeah, sure, Texas racism, but have you tried our chili? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. But I mean, yeah, <laughs> that, that's from my experience growing up there. To be fair, I don't live in Texas anymore. Can I give it the disclaimer that I haven't lived in Texas since 2009? So I'm well, chilly, I'm... come a long way, but my small towns, I don't think so. And there are good. I mean, there are good things in Texas. Jomo and Possum Posse. Yes, yes. I, there are great things everywhere. Austin. And that's you know that's one of the things about travel and sort of the privilege of traveling gives you the opportunity to realize that like people are the same everywhere. Really, um, we just have we just dress it up a different way or pronounce it a little bit differently. Or but it's it's the same. Yeah. Yeah. Now one more thing. The pardons. He didn't pardon himself. Didn't no, pardon. a lot of people are thinking that was very strategically and intentionally done. But like, yeah, his pardons, I guess, were interesting and managed to follow like no sense of normal due process as to how that would go. Um, like, I guess he just like said nah to the vetting process of the Justice Department's office of the pardon attorney, I guess, is who normally would like vet some of these decisions not that they have like final decision making um i guess just usually a president would give their list to this attorney and then they would look at it and kind of check it to make sure you know maybe they didn't do anything too bad to like not get pardons um or anything like that and he just like kind of shirked it um it's unclear if he actually even got the opinion uh, for all of them, but I guess even the ones where they did try to chime in, he just largely ignored them. Just you know, pardoned whoever he wanted. And Little Wayne, I saw that name. I know pop Little up. Wayne. L- what Little Wayne do? I didn't even know. <laughs> down for what? That's all I know. What to say to that? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, when it comes to the pardoning of his family and uh, the lack of pardon for himself or his family, it sounds like his the the lawyers that were advising him he got it through his head that he would probably be setting himself up for a lot worse stuff. Um, yeah. You know, and tr- because because with a pardon, I mean, Richard Nixon said said. Uh, Gerald Ford said that uh, said this about a uh, pardon when he considered it for Richard Nixon that um, there is a and, and you can confirm this mm-hmm. there is um, precedent that if you accept a pardon you are expressing your guilt for that particular crime correct I actually have no idea okay well I heard it said then <laughs> I'm the legal expert <laughs> but um, yeah so he. By by not by not doing the part, and he can still pro- proclaim his innocence in whatever legal actions that that will come his way, because you know I, he's gonna get a lot of stuff. He you know he he's he's financial he's gonna be financially ruined, and he's not gonna be able to start his uh, own political party, the Patriot Party, either. Why? I mean, yes. I mean he's I mean there's there's talk that he's going to do it and who knows it's certainly possible and I would love for him to do it because that would just tear the GOP apart and make them irrelevant and that would be great after everything they did because they deserve it but he's got too much legal stuff coming his way. He's I mean within 6 months time think about all the lawsuits that are that are going to be coming his way. He's going to be ruined. Um, the, I could easily see him covering his own ass by moving to another country as a quote unquote special guest or something like that. But um, political political asylum seeker. Yeah, but he, he, it, it's it's it, there's no way he's going to dig himself out of this unless unless you have the current folks in government think that by prosecuting him they're going to you know cause more problems than it would solve but then again but then if that happens 
think about all the outrage that will happen to the Biden administration for not wanting to, you know, punish him for for his crime. So who knows what's going to happen? I mean, I'm just glad that, you know, we are in a spot now to where we can finally breathe. We have adults in the room that are running things. Thank goodness. And uh, we've got some good early moves going on from Biden, too. It does look like, by the way, for anybody out there following the student loan stuff, He's at least putting it on hold for longer, it sounds like. Till September. September. Yep. See, and I read October, but I didn't I didn't click into it. And I know a lot of that is kinda is it the end of September or is it the beginning of October? Like whatever. But um I'm sure it's trying to stall um at this point to see what he can get forgiven in that time. Um, Because, my God, by the way, if you're a student loan person, like please don't wait that long to make payments if you have a job and can. Like, don't not feed yourself. Like, take advantage of it if it's choice between foods. But, yeah, especially if you're not sure if you're going to make the cut for any forgiveness. I don't know how I feel about going a whole year pretty much without paying anything towards that. That seems like a long time. <laughs> yeah, and that would be painful, too, because. I mean, it's... All of that stuff, but. Yeah. But yeah, we got good news on that. Um, the the Muslim travel ban is over, thank goodness. Um, the Keystone XL pipeline is done. Yeah, Doctor Recipient. Yep, and... Doctor. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> oh my god this is so awkward. okay so your face is like halfway off so I, there you go i can see you now maybe i can tell that you're talking i'm so sorry go ahead. that's okay um daca recipients the dreamers the people who came here as um children they uh are eligible for um, federal financial aid whoa that's huge that is that is and and um, non citizens will be counted in the census again, which is important. Yeah. But we got it. Yes, we do have a lot of positive things on the horizon here, but we still have to be vigilant because this could. I mean, look how easy it was for 2016 to happen. We still got a lot of those people that and that that caused 2016 and and what we experienced on January 6th still in positions of power. We need to be extra vigilant, you know, for a long, long time. But I think at least for the next five years, at least, I think people will be that extra vigilant. You know, I think over time, yeah, it will get back to some sense of normalcy to where people aren't as socially, uh, you know, politically active as they should be. But I, I see some positive things happening. So hopefully I'm, you know, cautiously optimistic. The big message is vote. Don't wait for four years. Like, the whole thing is, like, yeah, we've got, there, there's a Democratic majority right now, and there's a lot of people that like that. And if you're one of the people that like that, you should definitely make sure you vote in two years. Like, I mean, no matter how, if you like that trend, or hey, if you don't like that, or if there are people in office you don't like, you should still vote in two years. Like, because see, that's how it works. Like, that's how the system's supposed to work, and the reason I think it gets so jacked up, and the reason it feels so, like, jerked back and forth every four years like that is because we have people not participating in about 50% of the fucking process. Yeah. So get out there. I'm going to nag people about it. I'm going to try to talk us like maybe we'll do like some some um, politically themed stuff like when it's time to vote again to help remind people to get involved in their local voting and do it. Like really like get involved. And if you like, I don't know, if you're willing to like do jail time because you feel so strongly that things could change, like I don't know, instead of that, could you run for office and give people like us a person to vote for? Like put the put the energy there. <laughs> No Molotov cocktails. Instead, you know, throw in your hat in the ring and, and make some changes. Like, that's some cool, positive energy. Like, get in there and get get the sleeves rolled up. My cat's butt is, like, hovering in the side of my screen. <laughs> it's coming right for me. All right, yeah. Our cats are somewhere, but... All right, I think we got a good episode in the books here. What do you both think? I think it was the best episode ever. Because you were Oh, good. Because all three of us were on it. That's always the best one. Those yeah, I try, best. try not to make it too awkward with three people, though. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, 
Thank you all for listening. Um, remember to check out our Patreon shows. We are recording uh, some shows that are going to be up on Patreon first. Um, you've been uh, it's somewhat in the room when you've when uh, we've recorded those. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm sure you can say some, some a small little quip for the audience that has not uh, checked out Patreon. Should 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 they do it? Oh, definitely check out Patreon. Uh, I'm a proud Patreon supporter of the show, mm-hmm. in addition to being a contributor <laughs> to the show. <laughs> <laughs> I love this show. I know. And that is an unbiased opinion, ladies my, and gentlemen. Yes, my unbiased opinion is everyone go join <laughs> Patreon. No, the <laughs> Patreon shows are really cool because can I say what they are? Yes. They are um, reviews of the most recent season of Big Mouth. And that is one of my favorite shows, and I could – watch it and talk about it all day every day so i'm loving the patreon episodes yes and we are going to continue uh to put uh them up on patreon because like i said before one of my big goals this year is to increase listenership and to uh and that that includes uh engaging our patreon uh folks we've also fired back up the friends talking nerdy facebook page which isn't going to mean much, but it's going to be a much more sexier looking way to advertise the show on Facebook. But our, our Facebook group is still going to be there for memes, for jokes, for all the other silly stuff, like when my son puts on his bizarre stuff. <laughs> and also all the dumb poop jokes and the Bernie memes, which have been particularly delightful. Yes, they have been fun. They have definitely been fun. So, yes, so come yeah. visit our group there. So, anything else to say, or should we wrap it up? Um, I think we can wrap it up. I, I think that's enough. Like, uh, I, I'm just glad we can move on to a brighter America that a lot of us feel less embarrassed about. On that note, for all the juggalos and juggalettes out there, we'll see you next week. <laughs> Keep thugging. Subscribe to Friends Talking Nerdy on iTunes, the Google Play Music Store, as well as Spotify. Remember to support Friends Talking Nerdy on Patreon. Goodbye, darling.